we're going to be looking at limits and figuring out limits without actually graphing them, um, how you can do this algebraically, and so forth. Specifically, we're going to be looking at substitution and algebraically. So limit substitution is actually probably one of the easiest ones. Um, it's, it says what you need to do right there. So for instance, if I have the limit as x is approaching 1 of 4x plus 6, all you have to do is sub in that 1 into your notation. So this is realistically 4 times 1 plus 6 to give me 10. That limit is 10. You're just taking whatever that number is here and subbing it into the actual function. Now, like I said, limit substitution is probably the easiest form. There are times where limit substitution gets a little bit trickier. So for instance, let's say the limit is approaching as x is approaching 2 and I have x squared minus 4 over x squared plus 1x minus 6. So here's what happens with this. If I were to sub in that 2 right away, I'd have 2 squared minus 4 divided by 2 squared minus 2 minus 6. Oh, sorry, that should be a plus there. This ends up being 0 over 0. And we all know that this cannot happen. So limit substitution actually doesn't work for this. We have to do some things first. We actually have to do my favorite thing. We have to factor this. When we factor, this is going to be the algebraic part. The factorization is going to help us to see something and then be able to do substitution. Um, so realistically, you're just doing your AC factoring, which isn't a big deal. So I have x minus 2, x plus 2 in the numerator. Um, I should probably do a refresher here on the other one. So remember, so this is our side work. Um, so your a is 1, your c is 6. We're looking for the factors of 6, 1 and 6, 2 and 3. We're looking for the set that gives us 1. That'd be 2 and 3. So I have x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 6. Because remember, we need that positive 1x, so the 3 has to be positive and then 2 has to be negative. I group factor. Pull out the common factorization there. That gives me the x, and I'm left with x plus 3. On the last grouping, I have negative 2, x plus 3. So my factorization... For the, new, or for the denominator is x plus 3, x minus 2. Just a quick refresher on AC factoring. Um, going back to this limit here. So looking at this, I can see then that I have something here that can cancel out. Well, that actually helps me a whole lot because, like I said, that cancels that out. So I now have the limit as x is approaching 2 of x plus 2 divided by x plus 3. Well, now that limit substitution is very doable. So I end up with 4 over 5. You just need to go through the work and figure out the factorization to see what cancels out. Um, one other thing. There are times when you might have something going to zero and it might not work. It might not exist, and that's okay. So, for instance, if I had the limit as x is approaching zero of x plus 2 over x squared, well, looking at this, if I do limit substitution, I get 2 over 0. This cannot happen, so our limit does not exist, and that's okay. Um, 
there's also another situation where it actually does work out um, even though you use substitution it doesn't look like it for instance the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x equals 1 now it seems kind of goofy because if you sub that in it should be divided by 0 which says it does not exist but it actually does um, there are just times where you need to look at this on a graph and determine that. But I'm going to tell you right now that the sine x over x equals the limit, or the limit as x approaches 0, sine x over x equals 1. So I'm going to use this to um, simplify a little bit. So let's say that I have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over 2x squared minus x. So I'm going to use this information in order to simplify and figure out my limit. Well, looking at this situation, I do not see a single x in my denominator. However, I can factor. I know you guys thought I would get rid of that factoring, but <laughs> it's here to stay. So factored out the x in the denominator, I got that x on the outside. Well, this kind of helps me out. I could split this into two different limits. So my first limit is that sine x over x. And notice this is all together as 1. So that's really multiplying by the limit as x approaches 0 of then 1 over 2x minus 1. Sweet. I got this separated out. And now I can actually find my limits. So the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. We already talked about that. Then I could sub in that 0 in the second, in the right hand side there, for that limit. And when I do that, I get 1 over negative 1. Well, now it's easy. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. I just figured out my limit. So you're going to have to sometimes break it down into two separate limits in order to figure out your true limit from the beginning just because of the factorization with that sine x over x. Or sometimes you can factor something else out right away. It just kind of depends. So there is limit substitution, solving it, whether substitution, straight substitution right away, or algebraically with some factorization.